sin against them becomes very great. Did you know the city of Seattle, anybody who is Chinese is not allowed to live in that city before 1900? You guys have never heard the story? 1872, bowing to public pressure and rumors of massive Chinese crimes, more on that in a second, again, rumors being the key to this, the city of Seattle's uh, city council voted to prohibit anybody who was Chinese from living inside the city of Seattle. You could do business, but you could not reside inside the city. The ban stayed until 1900. Yep. Hey, Oregon State's original constitution prohibited anybody who was black from living there. So, so much for the enlightened West Coast, right? Now, part of this was a massive hysteria over this emergence of these new people. They weren't Christian. They didn't speak the English language. They were very different. In addition, they were accused of a number of crimes, most of which they didn't actually do. For instance, the drug trade. The Chinese brought the drug trade to the United States. Actually, that's the Brits. The British created the drug trade by importing opium. They then forced millions of Chinese into addiction by destroying their country and their government in something called the Opium Wars. So when Chinese people came to the United States, well, the British government made sure that shit was shipped over here too. So next thing you know, because the majority of addicts of uh, the British government and the British Empire were from China and Asia, when they came to the United States, by extension, the drug trade followed. Not necessarily of their choice. But no surprise, the shipments started coming to the United States in massive numbers. Remember, it wasn't illegal either. They were accused of Shanghaiing people. Do you know what Shanghaiing somebody is? Kidnapping. All right. Story goes that if you went to certain <coughs> bars in certain locations, you got drunk. Um, a lot of these places had secret trap doors where a bartender would pull a switch, you'd fall through a door, a bunch of guys would grab you, tie you up, and then next thing you know, you'd wake up on a ship halfway to Shanghai, thus Shanghaiing somebody. I would point out that's mostly white people that did that shit. And it was notorious amongst a lot of the sort of uh, white gangs of the time period. They're accused of prostitution. They're accused of drug dealing. They're accused of crime. They're accused of all kinds of stupid, ridiculous things. So by the 1860s and 1870s, again, their presence does have a factor in this. In some cases, it's just simply the fact that this stuff has followed them to America because people are entrepreneurs and you know, they'll make money off of anybody. So in the 1860s and 1870s, you start to have what's called, and I apologize in advance, chink hunts. <laughs> right? On the East Coast, you have paddy hunts. Beat up the Irish. You've never heard of this? It's called old-fashioned paddy hunt. Very common from about 1840 to 1880 on the East Coast. Uh, then you had another kind of hunt for Jews, and then you had a, Italians later on. But for most of the century, it was patty hunts. All right, You got mad, you want somebody to blame. All right, let's go kick the crap out of the Irish. Again, first major immigrant group to the United States post -civil, pre, during the Civil War. All right, On the West Coast, it's Asian Americans. All right, And since many of them lived in their own communities, Chinatowns and Koreatowns, it wasn't that hard to find them. Same thing on the East Coast. The Irish stayed in their own little neighborhoods. You knew exactly who they were and where they were. And they were distinctive. Same thing on the West Coast. So it was not unusual, again, especially coming from Republican politicians who just really, really could not stand their presence. And basically what happened was for years, into the 1870s and 1880s, around a month, anywhere from two weeks to a month before the general election, California, Oregon, Washington State, There'd be some politician go, I know what the problem with this country is. It's the damn Chinese or the damn Koreans or the damn Japanese who are living over there. Look at them over there. Look at them over there. And the next thing you know, the crowd would get all stirred up and they would run and just they would pick the crap out of these people and start burning the Chinatowns and Koreatowns down. It was pretty common. And in fact, again, I read a study on this that you could pinpoint when it was going to happen, always around the month of the election. Again, so they would lead their constituents in, beat up a few people. Yeah, we're taking America. It got bad. Again, their numbers were never as great. Their import, the numbers for the Chinese are not nearly as high as for the Irish or the Italians. But there began to be this sort of massive paranoia. And the term that historians have used for this, and I'm going to apologize for this one in advance because we didn't create it. Somebody else did. 
is the yellow peril. Yeah. Can you really tell how racist this period is? The yellow peril. Now the term first pops up mid-century about Chinese immigration to the Western world. Again, they're not like us. They don't speak our language. They're not Christians. Yeah. You've all seen the paranoia and the bullshit on this. All right, so I don't have to explain.